All right, in this video, we're gonna do a deep dive into all of the latest features coming into Rekordbox 7 in relation to stems. That includes the improved stems engine and the groove circuit feature. So today I'm working in Rekordbox version 7.0.4, available for Windows and Mac OS. And that is the latest version of Rekordbox at the time of this recording. Let's jump right in. I wanna look at the stems feature in the preferences. Let's click on the sprocket over here in the upper right, and that takes you into your preferences panes. And you can either type stems, which is pretty cool, or you can go to the extensions heading. You can see there's these different headings. So in the stems preferences, the first thing you can see is either to enable or disable the stems function. So I have it enabled. You can see that this is new right here, the stems analysis process, and you have the ability to either prioritize sound quality or prioritize speed. By default, it's set to prioritize speed. And now you can prioritize sound quality. So let's go ahead and do that. This is telling you that it's gonna unload this deck if you have to load the stems engine, that's fine. Don't do this while you're playing. Don't enable stems while you're DJing. Do this while before you start, not in the middle of the set. So we're set to prioritize sound quality. What does that mean? That means it improves the sound quality of the stems function because a stems analysis is performed in order from the start of each track. If you jump during the analysis, it may take time for a stem to be played. When prioritized sound quality is selected, the app may lag depending on the system requirements. For more information about system requirements, see the FAQ. Prioritizing speed allows for shorter stems function analysis time. The stems analysis is performed first for the play positions and hot cues. Even if you jump during the analysis, the stem can be played right away. So if you need it to be available now, now, then you're gonna prioritize speed and sacrifice sound quality. If you're concerned about sound quality, then you're gonna to need to be patient. Let's take a look at the FAQ for the system requirements. All right, so it looks like they put it nice and clearly on their website what they think you should be using in order to use stems. When using stems with two decks on a Windows, you need an Intel Core processor 13th generator or an i9 9th generator. Ryzen 7 5000 series later is welcome as well. For a Mac, you're gonna want an Intel Core i5 7 or 9 from 2019 or later, the very next year, 2020, is when the Apple M1 series came out. And so they also set the M1 series or later as a recommended requirement. I'm gonna say if you're using a Mac, you're gonna want at least an M1. When using stems with four decks, ooh wee, that's getting serious. Uh, an i9 ninth gen or later, or a Ryzen 7 7000 series or later, man, that's cooking. And on the Mac, M1 is minimum. Operation is not guaranteed for all computers that meet the above system requirements. In other words, even if you have these hardware requirements, based on your configuration, it still might not perform. They're not setting the expectation that operation is guaranteed. <laughs> like Use it at your own risk, even if you meet the requirements. That's interesting. Let's keep moving. Activate stem, stem ISO, stem effects layout is automatic. You could also choose drums, vocal, instrumental, drums, instrumental, vocal, custom one, two, three, or four. Drums, instrument, vocal, drums, vocal, instrument. See how it's changing up here? Do automatic. Drums, vocal, instrumental, sure. So that's the order, the layout of these things right here. Next is the stem wave display. Enabling it displays the output stem. Disabling it displays the original waveform. The active stem setting, that means when you press these, what that means is uh, if you press it, does it mute it or solo it? And by default, it's set to mute. And it's also set to reset these every time you load a new deck. That's the way I prefer it to. Stem instant doubles. When you use the instant double button on your controller, it's either gonna shoot it to the other deck, left to right, or it's gonna shoot it up and down in the layer. Since I'm not a four deck DJ, left to right is more natural for me. Okay, what is memory? Memory is something I haven't looked up yet. The option to increase the memory size is available for the selection. Marking the option enables you to change the limit of the track time, 15 minutes per track, total 30 minutes for four decks. For streaming tracks to 30 minutes per track, total 60 minutes for four decks. So it doubles the amount of RAM that you can allocate for stem usage. And if it's not turned on, the maximum is 15 minutes per track with a total of 30 minutes for four decks, which means you would only get seven and a half minutes per track on four decks. And if you tick this thing on, that doubles that. So that's a long track. 
if you're playing tracks that are over 15 minutes, then you're using stems on some on some other business. But I feel like you don't need this turned on by default. Multi-thread, what does this say? The option that does not perform the multi-thread analysis process can be selected. If the check is removed, it is processed in a single thread and is expected to reduce CPU load, but the time spent on analysis processing will become longer. You wanna have this on. All right, this is new, check this out. So enable the groove circuit function. This has to do with the GRV6 hardware, but in true record box fashion, most of the heavy lifting is done in the software and the software is able to be used without the GRV6 connected. You can use the groove circuit features without the GRV6. Let's turn these on. You can see when I turn them on, there is a new addition to the graphic user interface. You see these loops showing up here. I turn it off and turn it back on so you can see it happen. Off, on. So we've got these loops here. They're on both sides. So you've got, looks like four per bank, per deck, and then two banks. A and B, let me uh, close this real quick. A and B, two banks, and it looks like you have the ability to either trigger a single or you can trigger multiple. When it comes to this groove circuit feature, the difference between single and multi is a little bit different when it comes to functionality. When you have it on single, when the song is playing and you press another one of these little grooves, then it will take out the drum of the song that's playing and then we'll start playing the replace drum automatically. But if you have multiple on, then everything stays active and that includes the track that is playing. So that means it is up to you to remove the drum from the track that's playing and re-add it so multi is handy for probably those really nutty routines, but I feel like single would be a good way to get started with this and use the groove circuit by automatically swapping one at a time. But man, if you're gonna go multi, go off, that's crazy. I wanna see that. Just remember with multi, it is up to you to both mute and re-add the drum of the track that's playing. And then just like the sampler, it has a volume, a play, and an eject. And oh, look at that. It has a BPM and the amount of beats that this loop is. Pretty cool. And it looks like this is probably the area where you can save and load different banks. Let's look at that in a second. I want to go back into the preferences real quick. All right, so we've enabled the groove circuit function. Let's see what we got here. First thing is drum swap eject load lock, it's set to lock. What this is, is when it does the drum swap with these things, while one of these banks is playing, you cannot accidentally eject it, it's locked. Similar to the deck lock feature in the regular library. And by default, it looks like this one is turned on, display track titles and drum swap slot. You can see that the track titles appear inside of these loops here. Next is the drum capture, and it says to capture the drums stem during a drum capture. Let's figure out how to drum capture. It looks like you can choose the original track or the drum stem. That's kind of cool. I'd love to see somebody get super creative with that. I'm going to keep it on drum stem, though. And then the location of the captures, and it goes to the record box, or your user folder, music, record box, sampler, capture. So there's the full stems preference pane in the newest version of record box. Let's take a look at this uh, groove circuit function. Can I just hit play here? How does this work? I can, okay. You see this folder and save button over here? Click on the folder and you'll see that there's factory presets and then there are these factory presets. I've already downloaded them. By default, they're not downloaded. The easiest way to do it, there's different ways to do it, but the easiest way to do it is to go to the file menu, go to additional contents, and you'll see that now there is a Groove Circuit Factory sample pack, and you're gonna wanna choose download. And once they've downloaded, you're gonna wanna choose import, 
And when you go to import it, you will see that it is in your downloads folder, wherever you choose it, and it'll show up as the new factory preset pack. Import this and you'll be good to go. So let's find something that's uh, hopefully not gonna get me muted or anything. Demonetize, I'm okay with. Muted, not so much. Oh my God, these classic house songs are amazing. Big up beat source link. They're not paying me to say it, but they absolutely can. Classic, let's do this one. Okay, and then let's give it a bass music uh, remix by pressing this bass music button, I guess. Let's see. All right, now let's do our very own drum capture. Some of you may have watched an earlier version that was uploaded to YouTube of this video. And I actually had to take it down. I went through this whole process of explaining the MIDI functionality and adding a MIDI button specifically for this task, because for the life of me, I could not find the button on how to do a drum capture. So I'm actually gonna create a marker in the YouTube video now, specifically for this part because some of you are probably just here looking to see how to do a drum capture. It's really not that intuitive. It makes sense when you think about it, but I couldn't find it. And I looked for a long time. You would think that it would be somewhere over here in this area, right? Somewhere in here, maybe some, maybe maybe inside this waveform too, you would think maybe there's like a record button or something like that. No, it is nowhere over here. It's actually, way up here you have to click this little carrot down and it brings up these different tools and then you have these side arrows to shuffle through the tools and one of the tools is in fact the drum capture button for each deck and the capture length adjustment button as well so you see i have the tool tips on let's go ahead and read what it says Drum capture, you can extract drum stem, clicking drum swap slot while drum capture is on, loads the extracted drums stem. And this one says change the drum capture length to four, eight, 16, or 32 beats. So first things first, let's go ahead and capture the drum stem. We'll do that by clicking on this little button right here, and you'll see that it creates this purple loop. And you also see that it shows the purple loop in the overview. Now, if I click on the change the drum capture length, you'll see that the loop gets smaller and bigger, whether it's four, eight, 16, or 32 beats. Once you have the desired length selected, then all you need to do is click on the slot that you want it to be in. We'll go ahead and put it in this slot right here. And boom, that's it. The slot is loaded, it's ready to go. Now I can babble on Amen over any song that I want and you know I'm gonna do it. All right, so we've enabled the groove circuit feature. We've gone over the drum swap feature, the difference between single and multi. We've created our own drum swap slot. Let's get to swapping. So I'm gonna start off just by playing this one real quick. And we're going to go ahead and isolate the stems. Pretty good. I guess technically that's a vocal. Now let's swap in our drum. We're gonna go straight Babylon on it. Tight. Let's say you started creating a bunch of drum captures and you want to be able to manage them. One cool thing I noticed is that Rekordbox is actually saving these drum captures into your library so you can manage them into your library. If you go into your collection and you search your whole collection 
for drum capture, all of the drum captures that you create will pop up in the search results. And these can be deleted, they can be playlisted, they can be organized just like anything else in your library. And they can also be dragged and dropped into a drum swap slot on the fly as well. I really like that a lot. When it comes to control of the groove circuit features and the new stem updates, it's definitely clear that you don't need a Groove 6. So Groove 6 is designed to work with it natively. So if you get one, awesome. But if you don't have one, you're not left out of the fun per se. If you go into the MIDI section by clicking on MIDI up here and choose your MIDI device, I'm going to choose my little DDJ 400 that I have connected. You go to the deck feature here and you choose add. These are all the different things that you can add as a MIDI command. And if you go to stems, you can see there is quite a bit of control that you can do over MIDI. So if you have a MIDI controller or even your own controller that you're currently using, like this DDJ 400, I can remap the buttons to do all this stuff. Drum swaps through slots one through four. By the way, drum swap slot is tough to say. I just gotta say that real quick. Uh, drum capture on and off, drum capture length, drum swap gain, drum loop bank A and B, drum swap single, uh, and multi-mode swapping, and then the active stems, which were here during the original release of stems in Rickerbox. But all of this stuff is new right here. And then also, if you go to the effects section as well and hit add, you can see all of the rest of the features in the Groove 6 are also MIDI mappable. All the drum rolls, drum transi transitions, the release effects, they're all there. Pretty cool. Let's see if it's assignable to a pad controller. And let's see if the pad editor has stuff as well. So now instead of going to MIDI, I'm going to the pad button up here. This is the pad editor. These are all the different pad controls for the XP1 that I've done over the years. Let's take a look at these assignments, see if there's anything for stems. I haven't looked yet. So if we go into this here, transport. Okay, look, we got stems under the transport controls. And if you go to stems, oh, so it looks like as of this version of Rickerbox 7, it looks like the groove functionality is not available through the pad editor. Let's see if we can control it with a keyboard shortcut. I'm gonna go back into the preferences and let's go to the keyboard section now. And my guess is that it's going to be under one of these decks for a keyboard shortcut. So let's go to deck Look for anything that says drum. There we go. All the way at the bottom. Looks like you can set a keyboard shortcut to swap between bank A and B. And you could do a keyboard shortcut for enabling the slot one, two, three, or four for the drum swap. So less feature rich than MIDI, but still some stuff that you can do with keyboard shortcuts. That's nice. All right, now let's create one of our own presets. Click on the save button here, save as a new preset, and we'll call this my first preset. Cool, hit okay. And then I'm guessing I could probably go into here, go to user presets, my first preset, there it is. And finally, if you want to remove one of your presets, click on the save button and go to your preset name and you'll see that you can overwrite, rename it or delete it. All right, so yeah, the uh, new stems update for Rekordbox looks pretty cool. I'm still on the fence with Rekordbox 7, but it is nice to know that the groove circuit feature is available through software and can be controlled over MIDI. This latest stems update is already a lot of fun. I'll definitely use it.